don't ever separate the recording on on uh, mumble don't do recording yeah. separate streams because it, it's so hard to match up I couldn't I couldn't follow I, I listened to one that you that someone had recorded like that and it was just like what the hell is going on and like, I couldn't it was a split stream one because somebody said oh yeah then we can change the volumes it's like no get yeah the volumes right and then record <laughs> Yeah. If it's if it's split, you get three tracks, and they don't all start at the same time. Yeah, they don't splice and together I properly. As such, spent three hours trying to match them up. That was as close as I could get it. And it stretches. There's slightly yeah. slower recording streams because you're recording an incoming signal and an outgoing signal, and the yeah. outgoing signal is obviously better timing, but the incoming yeah. signals bend for want of a better. Time. Yeah, they stretch yeah. out like um, old cassette tapes. And you, right. can never, you can never match it up again. And once it becomes 5% unmatched, that's a cumulative 5% per minute. <laughs> per 10 minutes or whatever. Oh, man, it nearly drove me crackers. Never doing it again. That's why I like, that's why I like um, Google Hangouts. Yeah, because it, it just works. It, it just does it yeah. and puts it on YouTube. And then, it's mm. and then I don't have to upload a four-hour video yeah. over 20 hours yeah. or yeah. any shit like that. Yeah. I think my only problem with Google Hangouts is because our internet here is so fucking slow because we're in the middle of nowhere. It but a lot of if I, like it chooses all the bandwidth, and if anyone else is using it, I'm fucked. Yeah. But also, if anyone else in town is using the the ADSL bandwidth in town, seemingly you're just as equally fucked. Mm. Um, so if anyone like the neighbours or whatever who are still on ADSL and haven't moved over to the new system are using it. You can really tell that it falls over, but I reckon the only solution to it is is just having the uh, having the little um, blue screen of of you know me with the stupid hat on. If I if I run um, a mumble server on another thing on another yeah. laptop, and then run that into as my microphone input with yeah. you and me, yeah, on mumble as the output, yeah, into the microphone, and then socket. put that into the microphone socket of the other computer. Yeah. We're, get, we're getting into dangerous territory here. We're getting back to the world's multiple computers doing many things at once, yeah, but we will sitting in a very hot bedroom. We will have an <laughs> correspondent, and that's worth any amount of fucking around for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to think that at least someone likes me around here, mate. And then, and then we'll, just, we'll get out of do on the stream, and then we'll say, so what do you think about anarchy? <laughs> and, just, and, then, and then we'll and then all go to a cigarette, pot. you know, have a drink around the park, and that still be going. It's just, uh, he wouldn't have it that it's just look dude for for, for kim it's a lot it, it is really more simple than you can possibly believe the government are the bad guys ergo he's an anarchist that's kind of where it ends yeah i thought actually i thought um i thought graffin i can't remember which it was maybe it was the last one you guys did and he said that anarchism is not he summed it up really really well for me and i never heard any i i, I know the saying but i've never heard anyone actually Expound it as, uh, or say it as such. The anarchy is not anarchy is not the yeah. It's not the being disorganized. It's it's just the lack of a form of hierarchy. You know, it's just saying hierarchies don't work for us. We're not going to have any more hierarchies, and if we have to have a hierarchy, we're going to bloody well make sure that it doesn't fuck us up every step of the way. Um, which I think, if you go and look at the stuff in, I can't say it properly. I think it's Rojave, where the PKK and the YPG and everything are sorted it out. I don't know enough about it, but I think that the model they espout, that they say to how they're sorted it out, where they have, you know, they have these local community councils forming of people, have local workshop communities forming to solve the issues of that place, and then those are federalised up into other structures. But everyone's recallable, and at every level, there's a whole separate organisation of women who whose sole job. You know, from being from different different classes, or not different classes, from being from different religious backgrounds, from being from different organisations, is to basically call shit on anyone who tries to push them up the chain of command or up the line. And it's wrong. I think that's a wonderful way of doing it. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. I've done. We've done like three hours and have a cough. As soon as you turn the cord on, I bloody cough. Yeah. What's that about? Now the fucking cocky's going to start going nuts, and the dog's going to start barking at the neighbours or something stupid. Then the black helicopters will come for one of us. That's all right. I need to ride somewhere. Yeah, I need to go to the shops, actually. <laughs> we will be to the shops. But it's, it was just well, just one of those things. It's not like, look, you can read all you want about it. And everybody flirts with Ayn Rand. 
for a, for about ten seconds, and everybody sort of tries to overanalyze it. I've got the um, I've got I've got the I've got the, the graphic novel version of 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 Rand. Of I don't know which one is. It's not the one about the architect. It's the other one. I don't know which one that is. I don't. I'm not. I'm not got, so I've got, I've got, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a fucking, um, I've got a bloody version of that, and I read it and went because I couldn't, I, I could not sit there and make myself read at the shrug because it's, like, why? I'd be, I'd like, you'd, I'd probably kill myself if I went and did that, you know, not honestly, but it, it would drive me insane to go and read that woman's writings because she drives, she drives me insane. You can boil it down to you should be achieving your own personal goals no matter what the cost to anybody else is. That's yeah. So it's it's basically philosophical permission to be a dick, you know, in the way that Fr Freud is philosophical permission to ask people very nosy questions about their sex lives and their dreams. <laughs> but I, I love the fact that psychoanalysis is, generally speaking, people become unhappy if they feel no one's listening. Yeah. So your so job just now is just to listen. Listen. Yeah. And Give you someone someone to talk to. And uh, that's it. Yeah. So generally, people will work out their shit if they're allowed to talk for long enough. Yes. It's a bit like a reverse of the Douglas Adams bit where he said, you know, human beings have to talk constantly or their brains seize up. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's just like, oh, carry on, carry on. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Buddhism talks about this. Buddhism talks about this directly, that idea of talking. The story about the first non intelligent um, artificial analyst that they had at MIT. No. And all you did was type in a stream of stuff. And it would go, oh, that's very interesting. Why do you think that? <laughs> what makes you say that? And that's all it did. It just randomly just chuck out a, do go on. Chuck out, chuck out, a, chuck out a, a subject, verb, object and sentence it, that worked. He put it out in his waiting room as a joke. And he said, look, this is just a joke piece of software to sort of yep. illustrate, you know, where we might go. And that one day mm. something like this might be useful. But they mm. found out people that didn't even have appointments were coming by and typing <laughs> shit to this computer all the time and feeling much better when they went away. And he just yeah. said, in the end, I tried taking it away, but people complained. But they actually yeah. wrote letters to the dean about how unreasonable I was being. So the dean <laughs> put it back and just leave this computer that just had this only about 10 different phrases that it said on the screen. Like, so what you're saying is, is we need to, what we need to do as a revenue raiser connected? for Rangers. Yeah, is this somehow connected to your dreams? Yeah. Yeah. So what you need is a, is a revenue raiser is the the box that has the picture of Jesus Christ from I think it's Coptic Church in THX one one three eight or whatever it is. He goes and talks to Jesus, right? And and it's just this like it's just this, the same thing said over and over again, and they're just recording it so they can just monitor each other. All we need to do is just not monitor people. Install these things in like train stations and supermarkets, and just have like a little booth you can go in there and like you know just pour your little hound heart to you know whoever it is. Sort of like a, a very very limited Alexa. Yeah, and and, and just I, I, you know the people in your family. <laughs> well, no, I think I really hate them. Why do you say that? Oh. Surely the AIs are clever enough to do this by now. Oh, the Catholic Church has been doing it for like fifteen hundred years. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know, you know that at least with the electronic one, it isn't having a crafty wank in the box next to you. <laughs> it's it true. All your self pollution. <laughs> It's true, it's true. And it doesn't make you do things in the end of it. It doesn't make you feel bad about it. Yeah. You know, it makes you think about it, but it doesn't make you feel bad about it. You know, I bet you someone would, someone would fuck it up, though. Someone would, someone would hook it up to the Internet of Things and they'd record everything anyone ever said, and then they'd go around having thought police. That would be the problem. It'd be like right Big Brother if he did that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, there's no way There's no way of doing it. No, we've just got to have psychologists. I'm sorry. If I do something creative or I fix something in a, in a given day, I'm all right. Yeah, I find it's funny enough. I find going to work and, and doing my job um, that makes me happy. Mm. You know, it, it's it's weird because like because yeah. I've got I've got yeah, a few days off. Weird. I've got because I have a note yeah, when I'm at work because I'm doing a to write things down task, and then I suddenly come yeah. up with an idea and go, yes, I must write that down. That's a good yeah. bit. I'll include yeah. that in the philosophy section of Rangers. Yeah, that's just yes. Right to me. No, I find I find the uh, the sharpie markers that ride on stainless steel that wipe off with detergent very very handy because I have a wall of stainless steel in front of me. I'm, I'm and, I'm, and I'm and I'm I want my colleagues reading my thoughts because <laughs> that they will not all, want to come in the room with me. All my colleagues, well, I, I work in an open kitchen, so our kitchen's open to our kitchen's open to um, servers already. So I already have to mind my thoughts hmm. um, as much as humanly possible. But um, everyone thinks I'm mad already, so it doesn't make any difference for me.
I'm sure I'll probably think you're mad as well, but that's all right, because that's, you know, the, the questioning fact of whether or not you ask yourself whether you're mad oh, is yeah, the they're... fact that you're not mad. <laughs> yeah, people do, yeah if, the, if, if I wonder about whether I'm mad or not, that's my key thing. So yeah. If, if you're concerned about it, then you're not nuts. Then you're not nuts. I remember a psychologist actually telling me that, saying, like, you know, <laughs> is this normal? And so you just ask the question, is it normal? That means you're, that means you're normal. I went, is that really true? Said, yeah. It's like basically, basically find something to do in your life that makes you like you know satisfied and do lots of not things. happy not happy not sad to make something that finds you makes you give you satisfaction in what you're doing do that thing um, no matter what it is you know go and work in a fucking orphanage in india go and you know install telecommunication systems you know in the outback go and do whatever it is that makes you gives you something to do you know go and use tools and make things happen and ask yourself whether or not you're happy occasionally you know um but yeah, I don't. I find it weird. But yeah, but I think a lot of people aren't happy nowadays. I, there was an interesting report. I can't. I can't remember who did it. It came out of. I remember. Oh, that's what I had to send you. I had to send you the fucking. I'm sure everyone's probably watched it. It's anonymous for about June. Oh, from about January or December, somewhere in there. And they're talking about it's. It's a bunch of recorded files. They've they've doctored together from everyone from the likes of Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, it's all the managing directors and all of the like CEOs and CIOs of these organizations talking about the social experiment that is social media and how fucking bad it is for like young people. Yeah. And then there was another guy talking about like what's basically happened um, and with what happened when Facebook went from being, you had to be, you know, sort of 15, you had to be 16, but you could get away with pretending you were 15 yeah. to then what happened, you could be, nine and pretend to be 11 and what happened to that generation of people who basically grown up being addicted to facebook what happened to them and they're all fucked yeah. like without a doubt they all they all have like you know they all need to turn the internet off and go and do something else you know because it's not this isn't you know as lovely as it is to talk to you this is not real life you are a voice in my head like every other voice around me talking at me telling me something i need to know you know I, I um go and read a book everyone since it's been recorded go and read a book go and read a book i can't think of the name of it it's by henry rollins of black flag and the henry rollins bag bad fame it. and it's something along yeah. no it's not that one it's it's it was it was not widely done it's um somethingist or something or other something like that it's it's, it's one intense motherfucker i love it when it, they they get he's weird TV and somebody tries to patronize him <laughs> The problem is, like, is oh, no. Yeah, he's just like, too busy. <laughs> I don't watch television. I'm too busy. So, you know, so I'm yeah. here on your TV show, and whatever you say to me doesn't affect me because I'll never see it. So yeah. Nobody that knows me that I value their opinion of will ever mention it. So this is nothing yeah. to me. Yeah. So it just gives them that real massive 100,000 percent intensity. So what do you do for fun? He goes, I go to places where tell people tell me not to go and say hello. I'm Henry. I'm here to meet you. <laughs> And no, and get invited to yeah, houses for dinner, and all sorts. The of other cool thing about Henry Rollins is he also weight lifts. Oh, he's um, a mad powerlifter. He's a mad powerlifter, and it's like you look at him and go to yourself, oh, you, you know, like he was a skinny little vegan when he was in Black Flag, and we've all been skinny little vegans in the past, or at least I have. But now he's fucking massive. You wouldn't fucking start an argument with the guy. He'd like, you know, Every you'd be bloody scared to. I would start to panic if he ever looked at me like he looks at TV interviewers. Yes, I would. Yes. You know, it's sort of like getting stared down by a gorilla. It's like, <laughs> wow, man, you right. are really. So, what should we call you, Henry? Are you a are you a philosopher or a poet or a? No, I'm just Henry Rollins. Yeah, that's all he needs. Don't have a fucking title. There's Don't a call really me anything. Movie that, that, where he plays. Um, well, it's called He Never Died. Watch it, and then it's all over YouTube. But it's they. He went to the. He, he was supposed. To, he, his agent said, "I've got an audition for you for a, a lead in a movie." Are you interested? And he went, yeah, yeah. Love being in films. And he goes, because he goes, I can't act. All I can be is Henry Rollins. And that's <laughs> yeah. enough for a lot of these parts. So he was in Sons yes. of Anarchy and all this other shit. And he was in, um, I think he was in um, Johnny Memnonic. He, he just crops up. I think he was. Place. He does. He does um, appear regularly. And uh, this film called He Never Died. And he, and he turns up to the place of the interview and it's just a cafe. Yeah. Says, well, I can't do an audition in a cafe. What's up? Have I not got the part? And they're being nice. And he yeah. turns up and he sits down and he goes, and the, and the director goes, you've got the part. And he goes, what do you mean I've got the part? He said, I wrote the part with you in mind. 
you're doing, doing it. <laughs> all I'm praying that you do is say yes, because I can't find anybody else that will do this as yeah. well as you will. Yeah. And he's in God, it. It's nice to be wanted, isn't it? Yeah, he's just, he is just, it's just Henry Rollins being Henry Rollins for 90 minutes. It's fantastic. It's really good. <laughs> it's all right. There's I something I want to say, Anybody else doing it. It's, but it's all over internet, any sort of streaming service, you know, yeah. that, that does hooky films, it will be on there. But it's bloody mm. hilarious. Because you're just watching Henry mm. Rollins be Henry Rollins, but with one slightly different character thing on his life. And I like him because he goes, it's this, or I go back to scooping Baskin Robbins at minimum wage. Yeah. So I'm doing this for as long as I possibly can. So I'm doing this as long as I can, yeah. Okay. No. Funnily, funnily enough, though, scooping ice creams isn't that bad. Like, you know, there's a job to do. You've got to yeah, deal with public people. People. Yeah, that's the problem. That's they why I like working in the back of the kitchen, actually. The kitchen. They keep trying to get yeah. me to either cook food or, or serve. And I've got this really horrible plan. My One of the managers at work is started off as a bartender. Yeah. And at TGI Fridays, they do a lot of this flare stuff where they toss the bottles in the air, do the whole Tom Cruise cocktail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I was going to do is I was going to carry on working and get a whole collection of cocktails and just yeah. as a weird aside on the rangers thing show people how to make the odd cocktail and oh, oh, I, there's and a few. do all that yeah. you know, i know there's a few but i wouldn't even be doing it for the views although i do there is a guy that does vinyl record reviews but he's also yeah. an ace bartender and right. you go, oh, okay so we're watching but this is uh we just reviewed uh, Sergeant Pepper's by the Beatles, and we've gone through six different versions of it. And I know that yeah. geeky, but you know I collect vinyl, and he does all the bit. And he goes, and now I've I've made up a cocktail for listening to Sergeant Pepper's with, and it's yeah. got like apple and grenadine in it, you know, for the apple label, and then it's got this, yeah. it's and it's got a pepper liqueur in it, and it's actually pretty good. And he'll sit, he's got the, his set for his show is a tiki lounge, <laughs> so he's dressed in all this like sharp 1950s suits and he's got like the bit of a quiff and he's a really nice guy i've emailed him and said you know i was going to do a vinyl review show but then i watched yours and i was like this should be on just fucking television yeah so professionally done it's so beautiful <laughs> yeah. and i just feel like i'm going to be stupid he goes oh no no, no you must do it because you know i did a degree in cinematography if it wasn't good it would be awful because I'd have wasted all yep. that time at college. All that time at college, yes. I do do it because I love watching other people's channels and shit, so it sort of encouraged me. But I was going to do this yeah. whole cocktail mixing thing and with all the tossing of the bottles and the juggling and all that sort of shit and then show it to my <laughs> boss. And he goes, will you please be on the bar? Like, no, I don't like people. <laughs> you can really do this. No, I don't want to. Because one thing that pisses him off is nobody on the bar where we work does any of that. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to be entertaining the people sitting at the bar, kind of, at TG. And they don't. None of our guys yeah. do that. Yeah. And uh, just get really good and do card tricks and balloon animals and all the shit that they love at TGI Fridays. And then just have him beg me to work on the bar. And it's like, <laughs> you know how I feel about people. And just no. carry on working. They they keep asking me if I'll, if I'll go and work in the kitchen and do work on the grill. And he says, can you cook a steak? I went, yeah, I can probably cook a steak about as good as anybody can here. And, yeah. and cook all this shit because it's like McDonald's. It's just modular stuff. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same food reproduced. Yeah. Out of out of the stuff. Old things. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I can cook a fucking steak. I once did a barbecue for two hundred people. Yeah. No problem. I was on the grill all day. And he's going, and you don't want to do it? No, I don't like people. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> do it. Just let me do yeah. it up. Just you know. <laughs> so you you don't want to be promoted at all here. I got. I said I got no career plans here at all. Just let me <laughs> do what I do and go. Away. <laughs> Go on again, no. Yeah. No. Why can't the world be happy with you wanting to be, with you wanting to wash dishes, though? Well, like, why can't... to do it is seen as the, like... The exactly, like, you know, no one wants to, no one wants to do that job, right? No one ever wants to fucking pick up shit, right? And do the do the job that has to be done. Would freak out... If but, so why not do it? Would freak out if I wanted to do something else. Yes. And then they try and no. say stuff on me. Oh, we just chop up this. I said, no, because that's catering, that's cooking. I don't yeah. do that, because the second I do that, Whenever yeah. you're busy, you'll be calling me away from doing what I do. And if you call yeah. me away from doing what I do, the whole system breaks down. It looks yeah. like I'm not doing anything. But that's because yeah. I work like a nutter and I do it in a certain way that's just more efficient. Yeah. And than everyone else. Yeah. I've even written it down for them and they can't train people mm. to do it. Yeah. No. And I, no. Say, well, I have to admit, I, I love cutting up vegetables at work. Would you that's one of my favourite things to do. And they say, would you train someone to do the washing up? I said, am I allowed to mm. make them cry? And they went, and it's, <laughs> no. and it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've often still got footage somewhere of me literally teaching someone to cook. <laughs> in real time, in 15 minutes, 
where I'm not touching anything in the kitchen. And it's yeah. like the beginning of Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> it's like you will. Oh, please go and find that for us. I wouldn't have minded, but the guy grinned at me when he said he couldn't cook. Yeah. In a kind of like, I can't cook, so you're going to have to cook for me kind of way. Yeah. And it was like, no. oh, no. That's not how this works. Come with me, young pad one. <clears throat> You will cook. I will teach you by the numbers. You will not laugh. You will not cry. I will yeah. teach you. This is how this is going to go down. And I made him cook sweet and sour Chinese, uh, sweet and sour chicken for eight people in 20 minutes when he couldn't even chop an onion. Oh, yeah, that happened. Oh, I think I've lost you. No, that's all right. Sorry, I had to move across the room and go and get a uh, cable. Something is looking at me and flashing, so I have to plug it in. So I turned it off because I knew, but as soon as I didn't, then I would knock the cable, and then the uh, and then the recording would go wrong. But it's a bit like everything. If you're going to do anything strenuous or difficult or challenging, the first time you do it, it's going to be damn hard. Yeah. And if you baby someone, you know, I almost felt like saying, "What do you want to do? Do you want to say I cooked you all a meal, including you know prawn crackers?" you know, sweet and sour chicken and rice when you didn't know how to yeah. cook anything before you did. And you can learn yeah. how to cook all that. You can do. You can learn about eight skills in mm. this one 20 minute period that will, yeah. that will make it so that you don't have to eat fast food all the time. Yeah. Or we can cook a meal. And when we go in, you can say like, you're a five year old, I chop the onion. Yeah. Those are your choices. Yeah. You can either learn a whole bunch of useful shit or you can yeah. have chopped the onion. Yeah. You know, we're back at, no. if you've got an axe, I can borrow. Yeah. And we're back at saying, that's two questions. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got an axe, can I borrow? Have you got an axe, can I borrow? That's two questions. What do you mean? <laughs> Have I got an axe? Yes. Can you borrow it? No. No. So that's two questions. No. That should be the... If you knew how to use <laughs> an axe, you'd have brought one. Yeah. I know no, that you should can't be a... use an axe because you don't have one with you. That should be the rule though, shouldn't it? Like, you know, if you want the tool... You know, to a large percentage, to a large percentage of people, if you want to change their lives, you should make them make the tool. Mm. You know, like you think about the skills that it takes to make a knife. Okay, and we did we did this in the, sitting in the middle of fucking like you know Yorkshire that was years ago now. Mm. And, and what we did was was we we attached to a stump of wood with some screws a piece of metal that we had you know undergone a heat process on. This is why I love this because this is what I do every day is trying to explain heat processes to engineers now. They don't want to know about it. They like, but if you listen to me, then your life becomes so much easier. You can turn a piece of steel, which is rock solid hard, and will basically stick into anything you want to do with it. You can make it soft, and then you can get a file, and you can file it till it's sharp, and then you can make it hard again. And it's like that's what we did, wasn't it? We literally I, I sat like in the middle of a field and works. filed it. You know, you know, because iron atoms are smaller than carbon atoms. Yeah. So we heat it it's up, not... the carbon atoms slip into the lattice of iron atoms, yeah. and then you cool it down, and they snap shut around the carbon mm. atom. So you yeah. have and make it up. Yeah. properly integrated steel, and that's yeah. how that works. It's the riddle of steel. Yeah. So you should start off with, who here has watched Conan the Barbarian? Hands up. <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to learn the riddle of steel. Yes. And oh. you can hold it aloft. You know, even though it's only going to be like a four-inch knife, you can hold it aloft and scream crom at the end if you get this right. Okay? Good. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> uh, but that, they actually did uh, that. That you know, the how to how to make a knife in Hack Space Magazine edition two. Okay, that was that magazine I had to go and find the other day. I was trying to find the illicit copy of that. That's Hack Space. Yeah. Well, they sent me an email because I'm I'm on the Raspberry Pi mailing list and said, Would yeah. you like edition one of Hack Space for free. And I was like, okay. Yes. Why not? Like, it's a good balance of like old old skills and new skills. Here's yeah. How to build a robot. Yeah. And so they're basically they've and here's they're, they've remade make. Yeah. 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 They've remade make and made it seemingly slightly better. Make annoys me now. I don't like make really now. It's a bit yeah. too. It's still a little bit middle class like make is. Yeah. I mean, my favourite ever sort of practical skills TV program was a, a TV program called The Salvager. Mm. And it was this old guy, old Hell's Angel guy, with a bike that looked like a scrap metal van, but only had three wheels. He had this big trike that he used to transport shit around on. And he'd go, right, okay, I want a coffee table, but none of my mates can break when they're pissed. Yeah. 
So we're going to now learn how to set concrete. But I've also <laughs> got a load of these little tins. Yeah. I think it would be useful for storing shit in the top of the coffee table. And I think it would yeah. look nice. So I've got about 50 yeah. of these little tins mm. with lids on and little handles on the lids. And he goes, I don't know. I can't remember where I found these. But I've got loads yeah. of them. So I'm going to set yeah. these into the concrete. I'm going to use yeah. some angle iron. I'm going to make the unkillable coffee table. Yeah. You know, it's a bit dangerous in the fact that if you trip over it, you are going to break something. <laughs> <laughs> but not the table, so that's all right. Yeah. And he made things like, you know, kitchen shelves out of sleepers. Railways, it's just literally go, yeah. oh, no, I, need, I need to go to a salvager to get five railway sleepers. Brilliant. Just built his entire kitchen out of mm. railway sleepers. It's like, never going to break that. You know, and then he looked at it and went, I don't want to be yeah. the person that refurbishes this house. No. I'm dead. There was a very, there was a very, there was a very white middle class version of this exact thing, and it was James May doing Man Lab. Yeah, and that was fascinating. If you could get past an in depth hatred of James May, it was very, very interesting to see what he could make. You know, like they made a pizza, a cob pizza oven. Oh, it wasn't cob. They made a pizza oven out of brick, and they made a a kitchen bench, and they made all sorts of different things. That was fascinating as well. Well worth it. Watch. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but it's just... It's you just have to be able to put it with James so May. You need to do is, you don't, James, uh, May's, James May's unemployment tube for recipes, actually. Fucking brilliant place to go and watch. Yeah. I mean, people should make... They should be how-tos for people that don't want to spend money. But it's always this, you know, simply yeah. go to your butcher and ask for four yeah. ounces of neck end of lamb. That's, that was only £40, and we're going to feed one and a half people with it. It's like none of that shit. Let's, let's really do... Let's eat something tasty and not spend mm. any money if we can avoid it. I mean, like the River Cottage stuff. <coughs> First spend £300,000 on your bit of land. There's no good to me, man. And, and even the Cook on the Wild side. Yeah. So so we're going to make, uh, you know, a feast of elvers. You know, like you're thinking, great, elvers, you know, they're essentially free if you can get somewhere where you can fish them. And now we're going to add, like, 50 quid's worth of ingredients to it. And it's just like, well, that... That's not what I want to hear. I want to, so I think we're going to have to do cooking yeah. on the Rangers thing. And just go right. First, buy your ten kilo bag of rice. You know that's going to cost you like. Well, that that was my plan. As soon as you said you were going to do stuff, that that was my plan. You know, like what can what can we make out of what's in my cupboard? And I've been very unorganised. I've tried to find the fucking charger for the bloody camera that I've still got, and it's like it doesn't work. I'm going to I'm going to have to put the bloody I'm going to have to do what I did last time I did this and put and, and suspend to... the fucking laptop. Pointed at the bench. <laughs> good, good enough, man. To be honest, I'm not fussed about camera quality. It's nice when it's nice. Yeah, but even, you know. To be honest, but it, you know, it is what there it is. is. Something visual happening along with the audio, and if the audio is reasonable, yeah, and you can see what it is you're doing, yeah, it works. You know, like shit, like okay, yeah. Let, here's a crash course in how poor people do bread, and unleavened bread is dead easy yeah. to make. So we're going to do chapatis and we're going to do tortillas. Mm. And you may notice a similarity because they're yeah. exactly the same friggin' thing. Yeah. It's just a tortilla yeah. is, is wheat flour yeah. and a chapati is like a different wheat flour. Yeah. And they act exactly the same except the chapati bubbles and puffs up a little bit more than a tortilla does. A tortilla does, yeah. yeah. And, a, and, a, and Lebanese bread is exactly the same thing. And Well, it's not called Lebanese bread, but like unleavened bread yeah. from persia is exactly the same fucking thing again lavish you know bread, yeah except they use a bigger square yeah bread. lavish bread yeah but lavish bread yeah. is just a slightly different thing but you can add things like a little bit of watered honey to it to make it sweeter yeah you can put some sultanas in that yeah you can put bits of meat or yeah. onion or anything you fucking want into it because we're just quickly yeah. cooking it and it's very thin yeah the idea is that you yeah. may have to be making hundreds of these things in one go so I'm yeah. gonna, you know, there was a guy, you know, five kilos of chapati flour for two quid. Bang! I've yeah. bread in my curry. <laughs> yeah. It really doesn't take very. Yeah. Long. Don't worry about it being round no. because it's impossible to get it perfectly circular. But it doesn't matter. You know, get yourself he a nice flat pan. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Here's how to cook Chinese. There was a guy who taught. Talked... In a wok. It was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Heat it up hot. Stir it round. When it's cooked, take it out. Um, there was a guy who I can't remember his name. That's not yeah. And so because I don't have knives and forks, he's fucking gonna do a pair of chopsticks. Yeah, fucking obviously, it's gonna be mouth sized. Yeah. yeah. No, there was a guy. And he did us. He was he was very right wing and very Christian. Um, 
and uh, and and but he he did this thing where he it was I don't know what it was some hurricane somewhere in the states and he'd done he'd done this podcast and I listened to a few of them. This was like very mid two thousands. I haven't even been finds again. But he talked about going to the local ag supply shop and going and buying when this when this disaster was going to hit. He went out to the ag supply shop as soon as he knew this thing was going to happen, and he went and said, "How much you know, like human condition, you know, how much grade A wheat have you got?" And the guy was like, "Oh, we've got like you know." that that you know those those two pallet loads and the guy had his train on the back he said i'll have both of them and he's like oh, okay then so he sold them both to him top thing and he's gone home and he said the reason why he did it was is because anybody in the universe if you have one hand and half an eye can probably make chapatis can make a tortilla because all you do is you just do this thing make it flat and cook it somewhere where it's kind of hot enough to make it like bubble and, and cook through and you're not starving you're not you're not happy yeah. you're still fucking hungry and you want something else to eat but, this but you're not will, dead will make a meal for like 500 people in a way we can't yeah it was literally like how am i gonna how am i gonna feed the whole of my village type thing was what he's basically how am i gonna feed my village for a month on subsistence you know thing you know, before somebody else comes along and you know destroys that or steals it or does whatever with it because i'm in this like you know post-apocalypse shithole and it didn't go that far. He just went, oh, I've just he just ended up storing the wheat type thing, I think, and and explained. But he was going around and he was showing people how to make tortillas on an electric fry pan in like you know preparedness you know lectures yeah. all around the shop. Like he was just going around and saying, this is how you actually do this. You know, I'm going to show you the one recipe that is going to keep you alive because anyone can afford to go now and buy a twenty kilo bag of, of wheat. Well, pretty much anyone can, yeah. you know. Go on, you know, that's that's ten dollars here in Australia. But you know, it's not hard to go and say, oh, ten dollars, and I'm going to feed myself for a month. Any group of people with a, like a fire that's going all the time and a pot will make some kind of stew, depending on yeah. what you've got available to you. Chili con carne is a big Mexican thing because they raise beef, they grow kidney beans and tomatoes. Yeah, so it's literally beef stew. Yeah, all of those things come from there. You know, and yeah. onions, and onions grow everywhere. You know, in India, onions, yeah. some kind of, you know, roughage, even if it's just lentils and some soy. Yeah. And then whatever mm. spices grow locally. And, the, and you know, yeah. you may notice those people are seldom ill because they've got chili and ginger yes. and garlic in their diet. Garlic and, and onion and everything, everything else in their basically diet. Basically fucking medicine. Yeah. You know, Jewish people in Middle, yeah. middle Europe, borscht or chicken soup or some shit, you know. Mm. You know, mm. So literally, I, I, I yeah. like to sort of, I want to get to the like, okay, if you, you know, what we're looking at is a situation where we've got to make a kind of stew, you know, yeah. we're going to go around the world and look at the various types of stew. They don't do it in China because less wood, fewer trees, food's got to be cooked yeah. dead quick. Yeah. You know, but simply mm. speaking, there is noodles or rice everywhere in the world. You know, mm. So, you know people you know in asia they tend to make a soup with stuff in it as much different varied shit as you can get in it so your your diet at every meal is balanced yeah followed by fruit i'm, I'm now whatever grows i'm now watching my border collie try and jump over the fence <laughs> she's going to go any second she's looking out of the fence she's she's now looking at me to see if i'm watching her she can't see me because there's a mirror glass between us and she's looking over the fence and she's like who is that over there well, I, can I bark at them? Can I? Can they feed me something, or are they small and I can lick them a lot? <laughs> go on, go on, so I can tell you off, you fucking dog. She's, this is not my dog. This is my daughter's dog. My daughter is now six. This is how long we've been doing this for. I have a child, and she's six. This is how long this has been going for. Okay, and she has a dog whose name is Pepper, and Pepper is the most intelligent dog I think I've ever met, apart from maybe her mum. But she is a fucking scoundrel because she's that clever. She's like, I'm going to take myself for a fucking walk now and you're going to foot the fucking bill when I go and lick the fucking manger, you know? Yeah, I don't know. She doesn't like, there's a, there's a lovely old guy who's at the end of my street, right? And he walks with two canes because it's a retirement village at the end of my street. And he walks with, this guy walks with two canes. And he, she goes out, she doesn't like his two canes. I think it's because he must have four legs in her mind. She goes out and barks at every room. I'm like, we see him in the street every fucking day, right? I talk to him every day when you see me go to work, right? And you still bark at him. He's not scary, you fucking stupid dog, you know? 
I shouldn't talk to you because you no no she's coming over here now. You said we talking, so she's come come and look at me. It's what temperature is it there, V? It's thirty five degrees here. Oh shit! It's probably about two Celsius here. <laughs> I, I think I'd swap you quite happily for about yeah. ten minutes. But it's just all that living in the teepee. I very rarely turn the heating on. I did consider putting up a sign that just says, "If you are cold or thirsty or hungry, do say." Because I will just <laughs> not that many people come by, and yeah. I don't get cold very easily. Oh man! Yes. I wish you'd been yeah. there on the Hadrian's Wall walk. That would have been fucking brilliant. I've done a little bit of Hadrian's Wall, but I've never done the whole thing. I wouldn't do the whole thing. And I've looked at it. It's a fast. It's a fascinating place. Have you done the cool bit from like? Um, what? It's from what's it called? Steel, steel, steel ring to um, house steads. It's right. I don't know. There's an interesting bit right in the middle. That's about an afternoon, and people say, "Oh, I'd love to walk Hadrian's Wall," and I just say, "Don't. Just walk that bit." Unless you want to find out yeah. what walking a hundred miles is like with a heavy pack, don't do it because it's boring. 90 yeah, but I think everyone. But, but no, yeah, but being bored is good for you. Being bored leads to you having thoughts. That's why you should go to work in a boring place and do something that is repetitive and mind numbing. Because well, amazing, amazing things will come out of it. Led back on yourself all the time. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. with walking fucking miles and miles and miles. I'm all right with that, even with a pack. As long as I know I'm yeah. not wasting time on diversions. Um, because yeah. Hadrian's Wall, the diversions are everything. It's all diversion. The path literally right. falls back on itself. So you end up walking way more than you should. So you can do it one or two ways. You can yeah, so instead of, just, instead, of just like, instead of just like walking straight across there, you've got to sort of go around like a, a 10 k a 10 mile loop to come back to a mile in front of where you just were to go and look exactly. at something that you didn't actually give a shit about. Yeah. Well, not even to look yeah. at anything. No, that would drive me insane. If you're walking from <laughs> Newcastle. Just to go for an extra 10 miles. Yeah, if you're walking from Newcastle, your first day and a half, you're still in Newcastle because the road, it's such right. an S-shaped path. Um. Surely you can walk. Newcastle's not that big. I've driven. I've driven out of it. Surely you can walk out of Newcastle in the day. Oh, oh I'm not talking about. Like if you just started at the GPO. No, I'm saying you know it's not a straight line. The wall is a yeah. straight line, largely. It's an amazing piece of yeah. engineering to put a straight line across. It mm. is awesome, but the the route, the Hadrian's Wall path, takes you yeah. on the most circuitous route out of Newcastle. To the point when when we got to, <laughs> when we got to actual the outer industrial area of Newcastle, I just said yeah. I'm not following the path anymore. Newcastle is over there. Yeah. I'm walking over there. There's no way I don't want to go through yeah. every tiny little um, municipal park in Newcastle. I've just walked the best part yeah. of 100 miles. No, yeah. it's not going to happen. I'm not following this path anymore. <laughs> And then we still yes, got yes. all around the power, power houses because there aren't any straight roads into Newcastle. And about two miles out, it's all very I, estate, isn't it? I just went. I know where we're going. We're going to this hostel. I'm not going to play yep. look at, look in for particular streets in Newcastle. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I know we're about a mile and a half away from it. I'm going to get a cab. I'm not hunting through the streets in Newcastle to find out where we're going. Not with this fucking pack on. We have walked Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, but. The yes. vast majority of it, you can't see the fucking wall. We didn't see the wall, yeah. as in to walk along beside it, until mm. halfway through the second day, or the third day, halfway right. through the third day, is before you even see any of the wall. But you're still mm. doing all this zigzaggy path. And then you finally yep. get to the wall, which we got to on Wednesday, up on the high crags, and that's good. But it, it wasn't good, mm. so we were having a miserable time. We were literally on a cliff with a two-foot wall stopping us from falling off the cliff. We did that for about a day. Yeah. And mm. then uh, on the... On the Wednesday, on the late, on late, early on the Thursday, we got to the interesting bit. And we went mm. along the really cool bit, which is you have to climb up this almost vertical staircase. It looks like um, Minas Morgul in Lord of the Rings. So we clambered up that about 200 feet with our packs on. Um, my best mate's uh, son nearly fell on top of me and killed us both. 
because we'd have just come off the side of the cliff. <laughs> so I yep. got to the top of that, then then walked this, had this lovely walk for a whole day with good bushcrafting possibilities, i.e. we walked through a nice little wood where we could set up for the night. Um, and then another nice-ish walk the next day. And then, and then people kept telling us, oh, you're nearly there. You know, it's all downhill from here. It fucking wasn't. Mm. And, we, we, and then mm. we followed this straight path into this very boring village on the <laughs> Friday morning. Uh, on, no, it, it was Friday morning when we were on the, the, the really long, boring death march in the heat. So Thursday night, we stayed at a campsite that we didn't get to till Godly night. But yeah, we had one really good day in the middle of it where you were right on the top of it and you're about 500 feet up and looking out over Scotland and it and that's where yeah. Adrian's wall looked good so I'd say it's a day's wall yes yeah. if you I mean all these people are in tiny <laughs> yay packs even the the army yeah. had a, a territorial barracks on the route it's on on the wall and uh they yeah. marched past us quickly and you could see them looking at our packs wide-eyed with how much shit we were carrying and they said yeah where have you come from? And we went, you know, boundaries, yeah. where the wall starts. Yeah. And he goes, how long has it taken you? I said, it's taken us, you know, we started on Sunday afternoon. And even mm. the soldiers were looking at us like, fucking hell. You know, we, we don't yeah. do that. <laughs> but now yeah. I know I'm 100 <laughs> miles, you know, but that's most of what I learned. Yeah. But the other guys were fucked. Yeah. Everybody mm. else had feet yeah. like fucking bubble wrap. Because they all drive, yeah, and I walk everywhere, yeah, and I I wore the boots, I yeah. So wear. therefore, yeah, I did, and they all had yes. like 150 quid, you know, military hiking boots and shit, Gucci's, and then, yeah, and their feet look crap, and, and these the boots I'm wearing to work are just like slightly over ankle high, they're not high tops, yeah, and I came yeah. away with two blisters, one of which was one of those silly pinprick blisters on the top of my toe, and one of which was a blister mm. along the bottom of my foot, but it hadn't bubbled out. Like my, yeah. you know, when your feet warn you and they start to get tingly, in that kind of keep yeah. the shit up and I'll hurt you. They get hot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was just like shit. You know. Yeah. Didn't use a single plaster apart from on the bottom of the pads of my feet. I felt it start to tingle, so I, I padded those up with fabric strip. But every, one mm. of the guys still hasn't recovered. One guy was Jesus. told by the doctor that if he'd left it another day, he'd be in hospital. With his fucking hell. You know, they just ruined them. The guy that dropped out and whose, whose doctor said, you've got to stay off your feet for two weeks now, had only made it two days. You know, yeah. about 30 miles. It's, just like... it's, it's insane. Uh, not to not to be disparaging to the people you're walking, but, it, but it's it's astounding to me how little people walk, um, then, how that... much effect it has on them when they do walk and when they have to actually go for a walk, even if it's a by choice thing. But also that... As a species, we spend, like, you know, we spend a lot of time singing again. Yeah, I'm mad because, like, you know, you're considered mad because you take the dog for a walk for crying out loud. Like, you know, I, it's a border collie. She has to go for a walk or she starts to, you know, Free chew out. things. Yeah. So, you know, she just, she just can't cope. She's staring at me now waiting to go for a fucking walk and go for a swim. But I walk through my little village in Australia and go all the way down. And then we do 5Ks and I'll do 5Ks more than once if I've got the time to do it. I'll walk once around the fucking path and then go back the other way type no. thing. And I do not consider to myself to be remotely fit well, that's or, just an, that's just an hour's walk. you know, healthy. Yeah. <laughs> that's just me going for a walk with the dog. You know, I one day hope that I will have the money to go and purchase. One, one of the things I'd love to do, because it really fucking annoys me, this is probably going to go up some people now, one of the things that really annoys me is rucking now is a, is a proprietary term from what I understand. But someone has taken the word rucking and they have um, they've made it a proprietary thing. So you have like rucksacks. I mean, fucking stop it now, right? So I decided, because I, I can't say it right, what's the word that the, the UK um, squaddies use for a bag? It's B-E-R-G-E-N. Bergen, yeah. Bergen. So the new definition, and I fucking wrote it down so no one can do it. I did it years ago, right, when Kevin told me about this. Kev told me about this proprietary <laughs> business. Burgening. Burgening is the open source application of putting a backpack on, putting boots on and going for a fucking walk. And no one, because I fucking own the term, right, I fucking copyright it, I fucking hold the title, right, you're fucked. Because I give it away to everyone for free. So it's all open source and you can't do fucking anything about it. I, at least you're under 
GNU fucking licensing version three, or whichever one you'd like to apply first. Yes. Or as, or as I, there you I go. So my the, many years shopping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Collecting my firewood. Walk two miles. Yes. Bring it home. Miles back. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, but sorry, sense. children. Sorry, children. Get out of your car and go for a walk. You know, like it's walk. not fucking hard. Yeah. Once you get bored of walking, buy a bicycle. You know, Please it's not hard. Right to make you know, you, you know, learn how to work. <laughs> yeah, you. learn to use a tool. Yeah. No. Sharpen a stick. Yeah. Oh, there's actually some sharpen a stick. Yeah, sharpen a stick and then use it to dig a fucking to dig a hole. You start sharpen a stick and dig a hole. I've got to find that. I'm gonna to have to record that for you too as well it's intro to a book and i love it i love the book and everyone should go and read it but it, it talks about the spetsnaz in russia it was written by a guy who left russia as throughout the 1990s i think and he ended up writing a bunch of books about what the us what the russian military were like at that time but he talks about how nurses he talks about how the spetsnaz and like the original training for soldiers in in soviet russia was and what the conscripts used to do when they were just like like basically frontline troops just conscript army and how they were basically trained to it didn't you, you, there was no other training really given to them you could you, you know polishing boots staying clean how to make food and hot you know how to survive in the bush but one of the biggest things they ever taught anyone was how to dig a foxhole and the foxhole had a very definitive way of doing it type thing and this was taught from i think the mid 60s all the way through until the late 90s i don't know if it's still done now but it was they have a spade everywhere they go they have their spade on their belt on their belt kit and they use their spade it's a it's a tool and how you dig a foxhole with your spade is you start at the front and you basically push dirt to the front and once your spade is two inches deep for as long as you are like what for as long as you are wide type thing across your shoulders and how long you are you now have a burn in front of you that will stop you know 50 percent of bullets from hitting you if you're in a if you're in a fucking fight and you don't stop you just keep digging and you put all of the dirt in front of you type thing and eventually you end up with a hole that you can sort of like sort of duck down and do a sitting position in and then you get a hole that you can kneel down in and then you have a hole that you can stand up in and then everyone turns to their left and they all start digging off to their left and then they have a, a fucking trench line yeah and and, one, and and once you have a trench the other side of fucked because they either have to drop a bomb on you or they have to drive a tank over you. And if they drive a tank over you, still some of you are going to survive. And some of those people who survive are going to stick a fucking grenade on the bottom of the tank and the tank's not going to be there anymore. So it still does make you much more useful to have a trench. Yeah, nobody so attacking. everyone's homework this week. No, no, exactly. Everyone's homework for this week is to go and get a big fucking stick, find a nice comfortable one, sharpen the end of it, and then dig a fucking hole with it. Just dig a small hole and see how much it sucks. <laughs> and see how many blisters you get. You know, like there's, there's a fucking thing to do this week. You know, also, you know, those it's just people, a bit of fun. Those people are never completely fucked for shelter. You know, you just exactly dig, you, dig, you, dig you're in the thing. Hole, put a bunch of um, wood over the top and some leaves over that, or some pine boughs. Your job's done. You've essentially yeah, and you're earth, and, and you're not going to freeze and die. Yeah, and then when yeah, you die, yeah, yeah you're not going to freeze and die. All the heat will be reflected back at you. Yeah, yeah, you, you suck it up, yeah. Along with the phrase, right. don't fuck around with fire. As in, if you need to file <laughs> it, you, you just, you, you're you now in a fist fight with nature. Yeah. I mean, everybody, right. when I went out on New Year's Eve, I mean, the video's up. But yeah. it's been raining for three weeks. And, you know, the number yeah, of Yeah, everything was wet. Because I said to it, I mean, one of the good ways to make yourself go and do something is you tell a bunch of people that you're going to go and do it. Because then you feel like a so then you have, wanker when you, you have to do it, go. yeah. Yeah, we haven't done it, yes. So I went out into the woods, you know, just thought, I just want to be, this is my idea on New Year's Eve, I'll take some good whiskey, I'll go out and have a fire. And everybody was going, oh, you're going to manage to light a fire? And I went, oh yeah, because I, I anticipated it being a bastard to light. <laughs> you know, we're not going to do fire by friction with this shit, we are going to have to use all, all of modern technology. So they, they do these logs that are used to start a, a, an indoor fire in a grate. Yeah. And yeah. you like these things. So I thought, let's not fuck around. So I got some um, some of those little sort of polystyrene, you know, those little polystyrene type fire lighters. And I took some dry pine, just off cuts from projects I've been I've been doing for putting together bits of furniture for myself. Because hmm. I haven't bought a single bit of furniture for this flat at all. For your flat, for all your, for all your gear you've made, yeah. And all I had was one wardrobe, one bed, a sofa and a couple of chairs when I moved in. And everything else has been scavenged. 
like my desk is like eight foot by four foot four and a half feet it's one it's a big desk and it's mm. the top is about an inch and a half thick and it was being thrown out about 20 doors down and i waited till about midnight one night after work and i went and just literally lifted this 100 kilo desk and dragged it all the way back to my house. <laughs> I'm not buying a fucking desk. So I had a few off cuts of pine and shit because the DJ table in the studio, I built that out of an old bed frame because it was yeah. a really good pine just sitting there doing nothing. And it's not pretty. It's literally um, little angle joints for kitchens and uh, shelf supports acting as the angle brackets. So it's just literally screwed together Ikea style. But it's solid enough. Anyway, so I had some off cuts of pine and I had one of these crackle logs and I had a few fire lighters and then I just got, there was loads of standing wood that was dead in the bit of woods I went to. And I built a really respectable fire, but I didn't fuck around. It's like, if you know it's going to be shit, take the means to act in, enact that combustion. Don't go, and now I shall light it with a single match. Not going to fucking happen. There's a reason <laughs> stone age people kept the fire going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's, 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 there's a reason why you know which mushroom does this. There's the reason why they used to beat up the people that let the fire go out. Because <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. I've done How to upset a caveman. Ish. <laughs> let his fire go out. I'm, I'm really funny oh. about it. I get proper protective over fires that I've lit if I want to be warm. Can I touch the fire? Can you do it without fucking it up? I think so. Not good enough. Go away. Pitch back. Don't even sit in the wood. You're, you look like your bad fire, Juju. Yeah. No way. And people say I'm very mean for doing it, but it's just like, look, this is the thing that's keeping us warm and happy. Do you? Understand? If you want to, yeah, but the, yeah. The, the trick should be if you want to go play with making fire, then the oh. fire is already lit. Go and light another one yeah. fifteen times over there. And it's actually that's another there. thing. The thing I was talking about before the um, the the Brat Camp UK original series is on YouTube. That was one of the things I actually had to do was I actually had to go and learn how to make fire by friction. So they were walking around doing shit, doing all these bits and pieces, writing things about what they'd done or whatever they needed to experience. It was very it's like as as shit bit of like reality television as it was, if you look at it with an open mind and say, actually what can I glean from what this thing is and how much did it help these young people to do what they need to do and how much help do I need to give to other people or people around me, including myself. Doing just what they did, yeah, was was a very informative process. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? How do you make a list? What do you want to do in the future? And be honest about, you know, what you want to do. Um, you know, what are your plans for a week's time? What are your plans for a month's time? What are your plans for in a year's time? What do you want to have completed? You know, just write them down. Even if you don't look at it again for another 12 months, even if it goes out of your head, you wrote it down, open it up in 12 months' time, and just see what you did. Because I guarantee you, some of those things you're going to have done, yeah? Even if it's as stupid as, I want to take my dog for a walk every second night and I want to walk 5Ks with 5 kilos on my back every day, you know, like every every second or third day for a year, can I do that? And you go, yeah, I can do, so I'll just do it. And yeah. what a better human being you would have been if you'd done that. Right, you know? it always, it's always good, especially when you get to scratch off quite a few. Shit things. that you've done. Yes, yeah. yeah. All my, all my the the, the fun of crossing out is great. Yeah, <laughs> it is really rewarding. All my best ever productive days have started with me making a list with my first cup of coffee and just going right. Even and the best thing is to do you break it right down. I would like to achieve having done the washing up. Yes, I want to put the laundry on. I want yeah. to tidy up this room. And if don't just put tidy up because it's too big a job for you to be able to scratch shit out. Put, yeah. make make bed, clear floor, yeah. tidy bedroom, yeah. wipe down yeah. surfaces. And then mm. when you come back, because you'll find you do two or three things at the same time, you get to scratch out three things. You know, I want to no, be can't... creative. You know, that's this thing I, was I, written down. I tried putting shit PSD and it was a thing on a notepad. It was literally a mechanism. And he Kev found another one, which you guys posted in Recky Media, but I couldn't find the one that I used to do for work. And this is when I used to work for myself type thing and I was doing landscaping and it was the only method I ever had for getting, literally getting stuff done in some kind of orderly task because the tasks you were given as a landscape gardener were so fucking varied in what you had to do. You had to like, you know, go and install the plumbing system for the garden on the left-hand side. And you're like, well, I have to 
go measure up something or other, buy all the right parts at the shop, which means I've got to drive, in my case, an 80K round trip to go and do that. Um, you know, go to the house, make sure I've got all the right tools in the tool bag to fit, you know, lines. Um, make sure you've got a spare, whatever the thick fuck you're going to break. Um, you know, install the actual line, test the line, make sure that the bloody house system's got enough water pressure in it, you can do it. Make sure the tank's got water in it so you can water it because it's all off, off grid water system. You know, there's a process to it. And just the motion of writing it down makes you look at it and go, oh, yeah, I have to do that thing next, or that thing can't happen until I've done the next thing, to, whatever. Yeah, what I like um, about when you go to the hardware store to buy stuff and you sort of go, right, I'll buy a couple of extras is that eventually you end up with a big box of useful bits. Yes. And the amount of times I just go to the bits box, or when I'm thinking, you know what, I'd really like this. I'd really like one of these. And you find out you've just got all the bits to do it. You can just kn knock something together and you're just like, yes. Yeah. That's, that's my free speaker stand, or that's my free, you know, widget. That that, that's that's the thing I did next, yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've well, I, find, I find welding like that. If you've got... If you've got a welding, if you've got a welding, just a cheap big, big machine, not an expensive one, and you've got gas on hand and something like stainless wire, because it'll glue any two steels that you want to glue together, stainless wire will do it, because the nature of stainless wire in your machine, and you've got like one inch square tubing or 25 mil square tubing, three mil thick, and you've got a bit round and just some shit you picked up out of the scrap bin at the local scrap at the local scrapyard and at local steel merchants. It's amazing the shit you can fucking fabricate. Like, I want a table. Well, it's not hard. That was enough. You know, I want a set of shelves. I can do it. And the good thing about welding is it's literally like, as long as you've got a hood on and a fucking, like, you know, boiler suit, you can stick hot, you can stick metal together and it doesn't break. You know, one inch ton, uh, one inch weld, standard size and dimension, will hold one ton through its load. So literally, if you can weld it, it's going to hold whatever you fuck you put on it as long as you attach it to the ground and attach it to the structure around it top thing. That was one of the no. things they covered in the first thing of uh, uh, hack space. It's one of the first skills. How to weld. Welding, yeah. Yeah. So the guy, the guy yeah. made some stick figures for his garden. Yeah, but it's not... Over, you know, this is me welding yeah. my name onto a piece of plate steel. This is yeah. how it worked. And it was just like, oh. Yeah. It's not hard. And, it, it, you know, I... I you know, it it employ it employ it, employs, it employs technical college staff to go and teach you how to weld, and it's one of those things that everyone should learn how to do. And and people should be required. Yeah, people should be required to have a trade course, as far as I'm concerned. You should be required to know how to use tools. Hmm. It should be one of those like human things. You know, we were talking before before we started recording. We were talking before about what Heinlein was talking about in um, um, in Starship Troopers and how you were required to do service to get the vote. And it's like that should you know th that model of service, as far as I can see, was taken off of that idea that um, the, the 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 sort of the, the Prussian Austrian countries evolved into having, which is like you know eighty percent of their students out of school go and do an apprenticeship, hmm. and they have to know how to do stuff. Yeah, and you know doing things is good for you. But it's like you know, it's not a hard choice. Sex quote. Yeah, you know, a human being should be able to butcher a, butcher a hog, change a diaper, con a ship. You know, yeah, um, comfort program a computer. Orders, take orders, program a computer, solve an equation, pilot a spacecraft. Um, you know, and cook a tasty meal and all that sort of shit. And it goes through like a list of about thirty things, and then yeah. ends up with because specialization is for insects. Insects, yeah. And that's yeah. why specialization is for insects is on my cookery. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you if you order from the cookery house in Nepal, um, they do mail order cookeries, and you can have up to fifty characters on your cookery. Right. So my my sort of standard jungle issue cookery, which I reckon I could build a house with. <laughs> Probably. Really pushed. You put me in a forest, I'll build your log cabin with that fucker. I mean, it will be made out of fairly spindly logs. You can go through four inches of green wood in about thirty seconds. You literally hack your way through shit. It's unbelievable. And you know, and I, they don't make. There's no such thing as a ceremonial cookery. Ever. Yeah, there's the one you use. Yeah, there's, there's the cookery you have, and yeah. they make some pretty good stuff, and they're pretty cheap. But one of the nice things they do is they also send. You can also request. You have to tick a box, which is onerous, I know. But they, you can also request a silver coin if it's for a gift. Yep. You know, you shouldn't. You should. You should always give a silver coin for a knife. 
and they'll send you a yeah. little Nepalese silver coin with it. And when oh. my mate Dean got married, they they do a, a, a woman's cookery as well, mm. which is a different shape altogether. It's more to reflect the moon, you know. Whereas, um, and I got them two little, two of the smaller size cookeries, one for each of them for their wedding present. Uh, but they, that's a really good place to order cookeries from, and they're great. I think, I think um, my cookery, including postage, cost about forty quid, which is like nothing. But you, but they, 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 they send you a little brochure with it, and it's like these guys made your cookery. Yeah, and someone actually made this thing out of a truck tire, out of a truck spring from somewhere. Yeah, other. it's literally made yeah. out of a truck spring to traditional methods. This is the guy that made yours. You know, he stamped it. You know, that's his yeah. stamp. That's his stamp. Yeah. And this is the guy in the photo that made your cookery. It's sort of like Grandfather's Brooks axes. Yeah, yeah. The in that they're all made by. These are the person who made it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you've got, I've got to, I've got to tell you this story. Yeah. So, um, so for all those who don't know, I'm doing a blacksmith's course up in Sydney. Well, I travel up to the the big town, the big smoke, which is about um, eight hours drive from where I am, and um, and we do all sorts of weaving. And most of blacksmithing is about metallurgy or material science in in real terms. You know, that, that's what we're taught sort of at technical college is is not the is how to safely operate machinery. You know, how to look at something or other and and, and break it down into what shape should it be. And then how to how to basically heat process materials to make what we want. And um, one of the one of the boys decided he wanted to make a knife. And I'm like, I'm not buying, I'm not giving you my good steel. I'm not giving you any of my good steel to do this with. There's a car spring, right? You know, I will help you do this. So we decided we we're going to pull the car spring apart. Well, that's easy enough to do because all you do is like you know cut the nuts off the bolt and cut the fucking tendons off it, and it comes apart. And then you've got a, like a slightly wonky spring. You go, okay, well now we've got to straighten it, and we're going to make it soft because it's a car spring. So I want to be able to soften it so I can actually like you know work on it with him with a file, yeah. you know. So we decided we were going to build a build a fire. This is before it got hot. We decided to build a fire in the backyard, borrow the next door neighbor's petrol driven um, blower to get it hot enough to get it past um magnetic point um so i was decided to stand in the backyard in my in my little middle backyard in australia with a petrol powered um leaf blower into my campfire in the backyard heating up metal to heat treat it and then we had my tongs and we pulled it out put it over tips of wood made it flat and, and then put it in the new in the new ash and, and left it there something but halfway through the process my old neighbors turned up with their son I like I stood there, you know, doing doing the thing, with my head down, you know, bar up, using doing bits and pieces, you know. Young man stand there sort of like trying to like, you know, not get in the way, not get burnt, you know, and do the right thing and not get a scolding type thing. Because red hot metal's red hot. You, you know, it's gonna fucking bite you. And it's like, okay, this is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it. You go through this process. And then someone turns up and watches you do it. And they stand there looking at you like you're a fucking like you know it would be like you came down from space and you were a martian landing on earth trying to explain to you know your offsider how to do whatever this thing is and they look at you like you're fucking bonkers and they're like got all the way to the end of it and i'm like oh hi how are you da, 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 what are you doing you know like i've turned everything off and everything's calm down it's like what the f you know like basically what the fuck are you doing we're making a bit of steel we're making a bit of steel like usable why so because like, that's what you do and they look at you like you're bonkers like because i know how to do this i can now make you a chisel or a pin it's, or yeah, a yeah exactly or, a, you know, Anything. or any element <laughs> that you can think of that will make your life significantly easier this is yeah. step one i mean the best way and to I... learn how to do something is to do it first badly <laughs> about make five times right and make it <laughs> ugly and then the next time you'll be looking at it going you know what i'm going to not do that thing i did last time yeah, I've still got my knife that we made on the campfires, and that was in the yeah. middle of you know woodland. Yeah, we made and it. We made it where your where your thing was. Yeah, we just we just annealed some file, annealed some old files, took another file, filed it into the shapes we wanted, measured it out, <coughs> used a hacksaw to cut it to length. You know, which was a hass, but you know, if you can go from the technology that will allow you to have a flint knife, and then you can take a bit of tool steel soften it shape it harden it again all with a campfire and then you know an ice cream lid to make the bellows work yeah you know we made bellows just by you know obviously when you if you have to do it by hand and you waft a piece of plastic fast enough to get the iron to go the straw color it's supposed to go yeah then it's hot and you've done it 
that bellows would be a fucking great idea <laughs> compared to yeah. you know whapping whapping a piece of paper <laughs> like really fast for five minutes until it gets straw coloured and then you're know, yes. like okay that's it and then quench it in the oil or water yeah and it, and you very quickly work out after you file the knife why you should why you should own and operate a four inch angle grinder yeah you know very very quickly you work out hours. hours and you work out like you know oh and the great thing is now at work we've got um we've got precision grinders so you can literally set the fucking thing up you can build yourself a jig pop it on screw it down and just run the precision grinder over it and then turn it over and it does both sides and you've just got to just you just press go and the machine does it automatically and it's like that's no fun that that's no fun but fuck you can make a nice knife very very quickly mm. you know get your nice 23 23 degree scandy grind yeah Oh, that's the just the perfect edge for for most knives. Just like right. the perfect, I love. I I I think the frost. They brought out a new frost, more a really short one, a neck knife. That's pretty. Oh, nice. right. I haven't seen it. I can't they get. You can't get them over here. They're too hard to get all of them. Yeah. They don't. They they, there's no one. No one imports them in in big enough numbers to make it productive. You're better off just buying some shit from China or making your own thing because there's no point. You can't get them here. Ooh. Like you know, they they cost the same amount of money. Oh. Um. Have a look um, if you've got access to Banggood or Ali, AliExpress, in fact, which will ship to you because it's closer to you than it is to us. Um, they do a fake found even for like 12 bucks. Oh, shit, that's right. It's not laminated steel, but as you know from tool making, the shape of the tool is about 80% of how useful it is. Um, yeah, what it is, yeah. yeah. As long as it's really, really good steel. I tell yeah. you what, I had to mark my found even when we did a side by side shot. So you knew which one was even, which. So I knew which one was which because when you when you looked at them next to each other, they're the same fucking shape, and it's like a tenth of the cost of a of a real found even. Comes in a weird yeah. little Kydex clipping sheath. Yeah. But if you need to get a bushcraft knife for someone, yeah, it's a fucking good knife for the money. Hmm. You know, it's really no. really good, but you have to if. You can't put a real one and a fake one side by side because the only yeah because because the found even stamps worn off mine now yeah so I couldn't you had to look at it real close to see the indent of the found even stamp to tell which one was mm. which yeah but I haven't I haven't put that on ranges um, yet I've still got the footage <coughs> there you go but yeah that will be that that should go in the next ranges episode that was when I went out and did the uh, survival kit footage with Sam. That was fucking hilarious. You've got to get Sam on more things. It, I, I sat, I think I sat in bed that night watching that, and it, I think I woke everyone up laughing that fucking hard oh. just at you two talking about shit. It was like, I think it, it, I think it made me day. He hadn't seen it right up until that minute. That's his first, within five minutes, he was just dissing the shit out of it on camera. It yeah. Perfect. But I'm still yeah. pulled at Bear Grylls. You know, you, you're, you're the chief scout, for fuck's sake. Yes. You sh and this is the stuff that scouts buy. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, no, because your name's attached to it. No, you know, you know anything yeah. else? You know, it's like the 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 cordage you get in that. Any other cordage, almost. Well, I went mm. on about it. You can you can definitely do better for for the for for way less money for the price. Yeah. No. But yeah. It was just like oh. Yeah. You've made and, we're, and now and now see we're back in we're back in my head back all the way to the start where we started this right mm -hmm. before we started recording. Back under the, like, you know, what is wrong with capitalism? You know, yeah. we have we have a man who was, you know, bullied at school and all the rest of it, and he's a Christian who runs a massive bloody media organisation to basically better himself, and then turns out shit, you know, under his name yeah. that will literally get you killed. Like you, you know, someone like, should. It's not even like someone should sue him. Doesn't make good stuff. Gerber can yeah. make good stuff if they want to. Yeah. Yeah. I just think, oh no. Just definitely, just stop. <laughs> There's so many things in just in the hardware store near me that are better. You know, I was I was in the 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 Chinese supermarket looking at the um the meat choppers that they have. I don't yeah. know. There's probably a Chinese cleaver. name, a cleaver. And you're just thinking, I wonder how useful that is in a bushcraft situation because you got to think, I bet that's reasonably good. At, like properly taking stuff out and shaping stuff to how you need it, like. Almost like yeah. a little hand axe. Yeah. But even in the Asian hardware stores near me, Manchester's got loads of them and they're awesome.
but they've even got those little um they used to be in the pound shops but i guess inflation's hit but they've got these little tiny multi-tools mm. but there's they're no frills but they're you know reasonably good steel and you just think the number of survival situations where you're just thinking you know what a pair of pliers would be handy about now yeah just to grab onto something or a pair of mole grips and you can go into an asian super asian hardware store here and i say asian hardware store because it's it's specifically asian mm. you know the guys running it and everybody working there is generally asian mm. no disrespect i love these places and you go in and mm. you just see a pair of mole grips for like two quid yeah I'm thinking um, a little it's not a hard there. choice is it yeah it's and not a hard choice is it like dave canterbury doing the get yourself a saw blade like a little reciprocating saw blade and you'll look down mm. another aisle and there'll be five for a pound yeah and you'll think you know pair of mole grips i can pick up my pound with that i can lock in a saw blade and i've got yeah. a saw. Uh, yeah. you know they've got like nice little hand axes and all sorts of shit crowbars yeah. tell you what there's a, I, I bought a little a little teeny tiny crowbar just in case and you think if i ever have to properly get out of this house and i'm fucked i can i can the crowbar is strong enough for me to crowbar my way out of it and take on the zombies <laughs> Funnily enough, that's one of my next jobs at a blacksmith school is to make it make a mini crowbar. Nice. I get I get to make it out of a big bit of stock, big bit of stock, and it gets beaten up and, and rearranged under a power hammer. And we get to make it a little, little pinch bar. Yeah. And um, it's one of those things that you get. It's one of those things that you always want. I always used to need them for moving stone around in the workshop oh, where I used to work. About six years it, ago, um, Juva was on, on about um, these. Uh, server cabinet keys you know the, the the boxes that are in the street for your cable tv and that yeah and general server access and i said that's a utility key and he went no no this one's 20 quid the 20 to 30 quid on ebay i'm wondering if i should get one and i'm like no they they got them in the, the hardware store near me for a pound yeah they're what you use to open the gas cabinets and all that sort of shit. yeah yeah and, and they'll open about half of all dumpsters yeah you know those triangular lock systems they've got on dumpsters i don't know if you've yeah. looked at the locking system sometimes when it's like a, a news agent or something and they're throwing out magazines and shit they lock the they're locked them yeah yeah it's a little triangular turning thing and that's on yeah. these little one dollar utility keys <laughs> for opening up opening up your gas um box and meter uh, yeah. meter yeah and they're all they're all the same but these yeah. little four-way utility keys are like a, a dollar it's just like get one of them, put it on your key ring. You never know when you're, just, when you're, fucking you're gonna want to when, you, when you need to open something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If they stop, no. you know, you never know what you need to get into. But yeah, Asian yeah. hardware stores. But the, when those little um, camera glasses show up, I'm going to do a tour of those and show you exactly how much bushcraft and shit you can get for fuck all. On, yeah. You know, just prepping stuff. Have tools. Yeah. For fuck's yeah. sake, have some hand tools. Get yourself a yeah. hammer and a saw, and you know. It's just own tools. Well, especially when it's so bloody easy, like you know, like it's hammers really a bit harder. But you can basically you, you can buy a, you can buy a cheap hammerhead from China for mm. shit. I think the last one I looked at was about five dollars, which is only about two pound in my local bloody yeah. egg supply shop. I'm still yeah, and just a just a ball scotch hammer. Scotch-eyed augers to come down. Yeah, They're really expensive. I wish those. Are, I wish I could find like I'm, I keep looking in the hardware stores to see if somebody just produces one. Just a, a one I reckon. I reckon. Go over look on. Go over look on Banggood. I reckon they've got to make them. Someone's got to make a cheap version. A Scotch all of people put down. Someone who doesn't know it's a drill with a fucking handle. You can change a handle out and all the all the different sizes. Well, it's, it's basically a drill with a, yeah. a ninety degrees. It's got like a round socket that you can make your own handle out of a stick with. Yeah. But essentially, it's a bushcrafter's power drill. Power drill. Yeah. Because you can make. And they're very handy. And all sorts of wood joints with them. You can just make pressure joints. Yeah. Well, the first yeah. thing. Well, it's way green green woodworking stocking, isn't it? Is is that you drill you, you you saw a log, so you've got about I don't know eight inches of log, about four to six inches thick, and then you put a you put a, an auger hole right through the middle of it, and then hammer in a handle, and you've got a mallet. Mm. You just made your hammer. You yeah. Know, in with two bits of wood, and once you've got yeah. a hammer, you can make tables and chairs and all sorts of crazy shit. Yeah. You can make wood joints. Let's see if we can. I don't think they call it a Scotch-eyed auger. I try an auger. All oh, right, there you go. I've got my list of things covering my mouse pad. My mouse pad today is a piece of blue paper, so okay. I have my list of things to look up. 
If you ever want someone to write down mouse pad, fucking get rid of your mouse pad and get a bit of paper. Yeah, no, there isn't anything on Banggood. Right, I'll go and find one for you. A cheap one. Because they're about 20 to 30 quid on eBay. I mean, I know 20 yeah. to 30 quid for a bushcrafting tool. It's not bad. Well, it would be better if it was two quid. Because you could buy ten of them. They do plenty of auger bits. No. It'd almost be cheaper to buy a brace and brace and bit rig. Yeah, but can you? You can you? Is there any way you can change the chuck over? Like, is there any way you can change the the bit that the drill goes into and make that yeah. useful? So you haven't got to carry the whole fucking thing. But yeah, that's something I'd recommend as, you know, once you've got your knife or your saw in your axe, get mm. yourself a scotch eyed auger. I might just have to bite the bullet and buy one. Because when yeah. I had one, because uh, when I bought it, they were like five quid from eBay. The yeah. chap had his, this boatload of them, military ones, because they used to use them for, used to send them out. They were engineers. Yeah, just, there you go. Have one of these. But they're really, they're, they're, they're very, they're a very green woodcrafting tool. But yeah. it's well worth having. It just opens up all the possibilities. Putting a hole in stuff is a very, is, you know, because, I mean, you can do things like just thread stuff together. You know, you can just thread logs together and just tighten them up with cordage. Or you can, you know, just put, you can basically, sharp, sharp, you know, shape sticks and then just pound them in to lock stuff together. Yeah, so it's a different sure, method of, you know, different method of building. Laying logs on your shelter, you can pin them all together. And you can pin the joints where it where it connects to your supports and all sorts of groovy shit. Stop stuff sliding around. But yeah, it's one of the one of the most interesting bushcrafting tools. Um, and the guy that went out and built a cabin in Alaska, Dick Pranicki. Mm -hmm. That's a good video. Alone in the wilderness. That's a brilliant film where he just builds a cabin with a saw. He takes a buck saw, a chisel, an axe. Um, he's obviously got a knife and one of these augers and he builds a cabin and everything all the furniture to go with it his bed his sink his chopping surface his desk everything with just those five tools in about two weeks just from nothing and it's just an amazing build you know just think wow you know that's someone that really deserves to be able to live in peace out there you know use tools be a tool user <laughs> That is the whole of it, isn't it? Just yeah. be a tool user. Make stuff badly and then improve on it, but just get with the making. I mean, I, mm. I, 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 w I was getting a bit frustrated because my laptop speakers are pretty quiet, but I had a little set of computer speakers. But I like watching videos in bed, so uh, I, uh, I built myself a, a headboard add-on with some old LED lights with my speakers Velcroed to it, and it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Solved all my problems. The top of the speakers are big enough so I could blue tack a lighter and, a, and an ashtray on one on each speaker. So I could lie in bed and smoke and watch videos. Just made my life better. And you can't buy that. You can't buy those abilities in one unit that just does it. But it's just like when you when you've got a specific. Well, you could in the seventies. You know, yeah. Oh, and I really want a tease made. <laughs> I'm getting old. I want to wake up to coffee. <laughs> so do I. Just be fantastic. <laughs> Just wake up to a mug of something. Just improve your day. Anyway, man, it's uh, actually about half past three here. <laughs> you better go to bed. <laughs> yeah. I'll go and find you an auger. Yeah, if you do find one, let me know. Well, then. They're, they're kind of hard. I will send it, yeah. But we've got an hour and, twen an hour and 20 minutes of audio. There we go. I might just cheat and just upload. There's something. And just go, all right, crazy people in Australia. Will speak to us yeah. eventually, but I'm glad it's all going together for you. I hope, I hope that teaching thing comes off. Yeah, no, it should be good. Yeah. Please set up a hidden video camera so I can watch you trying to teach people to use tools. I could watch that all day. <laughs> well, funny enough, it's one of the things I want. One of the things I want to do is actually is do that. What I want to do is um, is broadcast them all. Hmm. Although it has to be very sneaky about how I do it because obviously this can't cross to that and vice versa. But I want to put up all the lectures um, up onto, like, you know, like like open courseware 
type thing. That's what I want to do is put them all up and then and then release all the stuff on open source. Because mm-hmm. um, there's lots of stuff that you can do, you know. And, and I don't know. I, I enjoy watching the whole um, people making things and materials, science videos and stuff like that. You find on YouTube, I find them very fascinating. If you can um, teach, I definitely. You know, it's a great resource for people to have you, if they don't have a college. Um, have a look at um, video of Richard Feynman. I don't know if you know who he is. Oh, the Feynman technique. Yeah, he's just the most amazing teacher. I, um, I know the name. Yeah. There's there's two very good books that uh, well there's a there's a there's a BBC documentary called The Pleasure of Finding Things Out, which is just genius, and a book called Surely You're Joking, Mister Feynman. And if you don't know who Richard Feynman was out there in in internet land, he was um, one of the guys that was one of the physicists in the Los Alamos project during the Second World War. Um, But he was also variously a safe cracker, an artist, a musician, and he managed to cross over from physics to biology and get his doctorate in biology as well. But a fascinating and very funny man who... Also had, had a thing for dating showgirls in Las Vegas and uh, painting strippers. Well, so why not? I, I thoroughly recommend his oh, Renaissance well. man approach to learning shit because he, he just climbed to the top. I mean, he even called himself ancient Mayan because he wanted to prove that the Mayans were wrong about the circuit of Venus. I'm not shitting you. Just <laughs> <laughs> there's, an, there's an excuse to learn my own ancient woman. Yeah, it, well, he was just sure that I love it. wrong about Venus. All right, then. Okay, man. Well, I'm going to go. But <laughs> no. yeah, check out Richard Feynman because he's teaching. Have fun. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, man. You take care.